Retrieving Objects In Django, retrieving objects from a database is done by creating a query set through a manager on the model class. A query set represents a collection of objects fetched from the database and can be filtered based on specific parameters. To obtain a query set, you can use the default manager called objects associated with each model. The manager provides an interface to interact with the model's database table. Accessing the manager is straightforward, as you can directly use the model class itself. Overall, retrieving objects in Django involves constructing a query set via the model's manager, applying filters to narrow down the results and accessing the manager through the model class to obtain the desired query set. So brace yourselves as we embark on a journey to unravel the mystifying realm of retrieving objects using queries in Django. But hold your horses, for we have yet to traverse the profound depths of Django views. Fear not, though, for that moment shall surely come. Today, we shall traverse the path of simplicity employing a view so elegantly simple that it shall unfurl the secrets of object retrieval using queries. So, without further ado, let us embark on this quest for knowledge, where clarity shall be our guiding star. But first, let us check server to check if everything is in place for our dev server. We will do it by typing python manage.py run server in the terminal. Then we will follow this link. Congratulations! The install worked successfully. Alright folks, let's kick things off by conjuring up a swanky view to give life to our magnificent index masterpiece. First, we import a magical function called render from the mystical realm of Django.shortcuts. This function has the power to weave enchanting web pages for us. Next, we summon a wondrous function named index that accepts a humble request from the user, a humble mortal who seeks a glimpse of our creation. Within this function, we call upon the power of render to conjure our index.html. We present our request, entrusting it to the capable hands of the render function. We also pass an empty dictionary, which shall serve as a blank canvas for any other mystical powers we might invoke. But fear not, fellow wanderers of the digital realm, for this humble view is merely a glimpse into the vast ocean of knowledge that awaits us. It is but a stepping stone, a teaser of the unfathomable power that lies within the mystical domain of Django views. In due time, we shall embark on a grand quest, delving deep into the heart of views, where the true magic unfolds. But for the moment, create a URLS file in your application to include a route for the index view. We import a specific function called path from Django's URLS module. It's like bringing in a special tool that helps us create paths. Next, we import the views module from the current directory. The dot represents the current directory. The views module contains the functions that define what happens when a user visits a specific URL. URL patterns is a list that holds all the paths of our web application. Then we create a new path. That tells Django that when a user visits this URL, Django will use the index function to show them the list of entries. Next we will have to include our app's URL in the main project URL. It is necessary because it allows the web application to map specific URL to the views defined within each app. Now, it is time to create our index template. Within your Django project, navigate to the directory of your app. This is typically the directory that contains your models and views files for that specific app. 
Create a new directory called templates if it doesn't already exist. This directory is where Django looks for template files. Inside the templates directory, create a new file named index.html. This is the template file that will be associated with the index view. Add some hello world header in your template and run your server if it is not running. Open your browser you will find the hello world text rendered. Now, we can streamline our development process and take advantage of pre-designed components and styles provided by Bootstrap. Here's how we can incorporate it into our Django project. Open the Bootstrap starter template page in your web browser. Copy the starter template. and pass the code in your index file that we have just created. Refresh your page again. Now, let's add a bootstrap table component in our template. Let's choose this one, copy it, let's jazz up this bootstrap starter template with our own unique style and customizations, make some tweaks that will make it truly yours, take your time to work your magic, and I'll be here when you're ready to continue. Retrieving all objects. When working with Django's models, the simplest way to retrieve all objects from a table is by using the all method on a manager. The all method returns a query set, which is a collection of objects representing the retrieved rows from the table. Let me explain it in a simple way using the previously created view and the entry model. In our applications views file, we import the entry model from the current applications models file. Inside the index function, we retrieve all the entries from the entry model using the objects.all method. This gets all the entries present in the database. Render is a function provided by Django that takes multiple parameters, including the request object, the name of the template, and the context data. The context data is specified as a dictionary, enclosed in curly braces. In this case, the context dictionary will have one key value pair, entries and entries. This means that the key entries is associated with the value entries, which contains all the entries retrieved from the database. In summary, the context in this code provides the entries variable to the HTML template, allowing the template to access and display the retrieved entries from the database. Inside the table body, we use the for loop that iterates over each entry in the entries variable.
For each entry, a new table row is created. Inside the table row, the data for each column is displayed within table data elements. Inside the loop, there's another for loop that iterates over each author associated with the current entry. For each author, a new table data element is created, and the author's name is displayed using authors.name. In summary, this HTML code utilizes the entry's context variable to dynamically generate a table with rows and columns representing the retrieved entry objects. The Django template variables are used to fetch and display specific data from each entry, including the entry's ID, headline, blog content, associated authors, number of comments, rating, and published date. The all method ensures that all entries are fetched from the database, allowing viewers to see a comprehensive view of the data available. They can scroll through the table and view all the entries and their associated information, providing a complete picture of the data stored in the entry model. In this demonstration, we utilize three important components of web development, views, URLs, and HTML templates. These components work together to showcase how objects are retrieved and displayed in a web application. While these concepts may take time to fully grasp, they are essential for build. I will delve deeper into the concepts of views, URLs, and HTML templates to provide a comprehensive understanding of how they work together in web development. However, for the time being, I encourage you to focus on the concept of object retrieval that we have discussed in this part. Retrieving specific objects with filters. The all method is used to retrieve all objects from a table. However, in many cases, you may not need all the objects, but rather a specific subset that meets certain conditions. This is where filtering comes into play. To create a subset of objects, you can refine the initial query set by adding filter conditions using the filter method. The filter method accepts keyword arguments that define the conditions for selecting objects. The method returns a new query set containing only the objects that match the given lookup parameters. On the other hand, if you want to exclude objects that match certain conditions, you can use the exclude method. The exclude method works similarly to filter, but instead of including matching objects, it returns a new query set containing objects that do not match the given lookup parameters. These filtering methods allow you to refine your query set and retrieve specific objects based on your desired criteria, making it easier to work with the data in your database. Let's dive into real-world examples and witness the power of selective data retrieval in action. 
In this illustrative demonstration, we shall leverage the pre-existing models, views, and templates to showcase the practical implementation of filtering objects. With the application of the filter method, we shall elegantly sort through these table objects and selectively retrieve only those with the count of precisely two comments. Here the resulting filtered query set will be stored in the variable filtering. Entry.objects represents the query set of the entry model, allowing us to interact with the database table associated with the entry model. The filter method is used to specify the filtering condition. In this case, we want to filter objects based on the value of the number of comments field being equal to 2. 2 is the value we are filtering for. We want to retrieve only those entries that have precisely 2 comments. In our HTML template, we will seamlessly incorporate the previously mentioned table. We shall deftly duplicate the table and ingeniously introduce an heading before seamlessly integrating the duplicated table. But first, we will pass the filtered query set as a context variable named filtering. This allows the filtered objects to be accessible within the template for further processing or display purposes. Next, in our duplicated table, we will employ a clever iteration strategy. Instead of looping through all the entries as before, we will gracefully traverse through the filtered query set, aptly named, filtering. As you keenly observe, in our second table, a remarkable distinction emerges. You notice that this table exclusively showcases objects with precisely two comments. It vividly exemplifies the fruitful outcome of our meticulous filtering process. Now, to elevate our data selection prowess, we embark on a new quest. We aspire to acquire all objects, except for those with a rating of 4. For this purpose, we shall harness the extraordinary capabilities of the exclude method, which empowers us to gracefully exclude objects based on specific criteria. With precision, we proceed to accomplish our goal. By employing the exclude method, we seamlessly construct a refined query set called excluding. This extraordinary query set gracefully omits any objects that possess a rating of 4. Continuing our journey, we venture into the realms of the HTML template once more. We deftly duplicate the table once again. And this time, we begin by graciously introducing a header element. Within the loop, we elegantly iterate through the refined query set, populating the table with the corresponding object attributes. To bring our achievement to fruition, we proceed to render the index.html template, passing the refined query set as a context variable named excluded. This allows us to seamlessly integrate the filter data into our template, further enhancing our data presentation. As your discerning eyes can perceive, a profound transformation has taken place. At this juncture, we proudly present the refined result, an exquisite collection of all objects, thoughtfully excluding those with a rating equal to 4. You have set the stage for an even more intricate filtering scenario. Fear not, for the powerful technique of chaining filters shall be our guiding light in this endeavor. To filter objects with exactly two comments and exclude those with a rating equal to 4, we can chain multiple filter and exclude operations. 
Chaining filters empowers us to construct intricate queries and precisely retrieve the desired objects from the database, based on a combination of multiple filtering conditions. It provides flexibility and control over data selection, enabling us to express sophisticated filtering requirements in a concise and expressive manner. Here's an example code that showcases this approach. The resulting query set will be stored in the variable chain filter. It will contain objects that meet both filtering conditions, having exactly two comments and not having a rating of four. In this elegant expression, we apply the filter method to retrieve objects with number of comments equal to 2. Then, we chain the exclude method to exclude objects with the rating of 4 from the filtered result. Then we can seamlessly integrate this refined query set into our context and template, following a similar process as before, to present the selected objects in a visually appealing and insightful manner. The table's content will vary depending on the data in the database and the specific objects that satisfy the filtering conditions. Only the entries that meet both criteria having two comments and a rating other than four will be included in the resulting table.